It sounds that the battle between Xbox and PlayStation is about to explode because Sony is finally attempting to take on Game Pass. What's up, Gabriel Streamcast guy here, and I think we all realize that the biggest weapon that Microsoft has is Xbox Game Pass. The fact that you can pay a tiny monthly fee and instantly have access to every game, new and old, that Microsoft has ever put out for decades, it's a serious strength. It's drawing people in. I mean, let's face it, people are still buying Xbox Xboxes, Series X, Series S, the original Xbox One, or even just getting Game Pass on PC, everybody is now giving money to Microsoft. And Sony is seemingly getting very, very jealous of that. So there's this new leak that just came out literally minutes ago over on Bloomberg by Jason Schreier. PlayStation plans new service to take on Xbox Game Pass. Now, I've already looked through this article, and I want to tell you the most hyped thing about this is that it sounds like PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4 games are all going to get packaged together. They're straight up going to copy the Game Pass formula, and I'm so excited about that. But let me show you the three tiers of the service. Straight up, Sony Group PlayStation Division is planning a new subscription service to rival Microsoft's Game Pass. Now, this service, which is called Spartacus, will allow PlayStation owners to pay a monthly fee to access a catalog of modern and classic games, said people who ask not to be identified. This offering will likely be available on the PlayStation 4 because it's sold 116 million units and also on the PlayStation 5. Now, here's the big thing about this that makes it extra interesting. When it launches, it's expected in the spring, the service is going to merge together Sony's two separate existing subscription services services, which is PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now. So it's pretty good. This is going to make it where, like right now, we're all playing for PlayStation Plus because it's going to make it where you have access to online games. PlayStation Now, it gave us an ability to download or stream games. Um, I I'm just going to be nice about this. PlayStation Now is not as good as I hoped it could be. I've been subscribed to PlayStation Now for the last two years, and I don't use it that much. It's cool occasionally to download or to stream a PlayStation 3 game, but it's still a service that feels very inadequate when you compare it to the perfection of Xbox Game Pass. It's nuts to me that Xbox manages to instantly download any game and they run so flawlessly. Like, it's, it's hard to even compare the two products because Game Pass is up here and PlayStation Now, for the most part, has kind of been this vastly subpar experience. And the fact that we have to pay separate for the online obviously has been a detriment. So here's the real part of it that gets extra, extra, extra juicy. This is the entire reason I'm making this video. Details on Spartacus may not be finalized, but documentation reviewed by Bloomberg, which means that this is stuff that was sent to Jason Schreier so he could peruse it at his leisure, says that there's going to be three separate tiers. The first tier, existing PlayStation Plus benefits. So straight up, that's the original version. That means you're just going to be paying like five $5 or $7 a month probably for basic internet access. It's going to let you play, you know, Call of Duty on the internet or, you know, get the PlayStation Plus skins in Fortnite. The second offering is a more large catalog of PlayStation 4 and eventually PlayStation 5 games, which means that this is sort of watered down Game Pass at this point in that the biggest appeal to me of Game Pass is the fact that I get the newest Xbox games on day one. It's cool to play Forza Horizon 5 instantly the second it comes out with my already existing fee. It sounds like they're doing a slightly downgraded version of that where you're going to eventually have access to these games, maybe after six months or a year. Now, I'm completely pulling that number out of my butt. Maybe it'll only be a month, maybe it'll only be a week, but it sounds like the fact that we're still going to have access to it this seems like an easy system seller. I mean, think about all the people that would straight up buy a PlayStation 4 right now if a subscription service gave them access to stuff like Spider-Man, God of War, all of the Uncharted games. Like, there's a lot of people that we kind of forget about who are just jumping onto video games 
today. Like straight up, they've just started playing stuff for the first time ever. And I'm sure it's kind of overwhelming because these catalogs are so big. They hear about all these different great games. Having a subscription service lets people treat it more like Netflix. They just get a chance to pick and choose whatever stuff they hear about that seems appealing during that moment. But let's talk about tier three. The third tier would add extended demos, game streaming, and a library of classic PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PSP games. I'm losing my mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh my god, this is literally all I wanted. I love retro gaming a lot. That's why I collect all these old school games in perfect condition. I love Chrono Cross. You don't see it very often, but I have a gigantic collection of PSP games. Old school PlayStation is arguably the best that PlayStation has ever been. I love 90s RPGs, those early 2000 freaking masterpieces. Like, the idea of getting a chance to play the Patapon trilogy, like, okay, I'm trying to keep my chill here. If this actually exists and is even half as good as Game Pass, I think that this is going to be a very, very smart move. Now, additionally, here's my one big fear of it is that I really want Sony to do this. I really want Sony to do this perfectly because as much as that seems obvious, sometimes companies manage to screw up such an easy slam dunk. Think about the fact that Nintendo already owns the original code to all of their own games, obviously, right? They own Super Paper Mario and everything. Like, it's all existing. The fact that Nintendo recently, they, they created something sort of like this. There was the existing version of Nintendo Switch Online, and now there's the premium Nintendo Switch online called the expansion pass which does include nintendo 64 games but the nintendo 64 games that are on there are very very sporadic it's just a weird random selection and they're not the best emulation of it my fear for this is that as excited as i am to see these games come back i'm just fearful of what if they screw it up like this is a good chance for them to win a gigantic amount of goodwill but if this freaking thing if tier 3 subscription ends up costing like $100 a year, that emulation better be perfect. Every single game better run flawlessly. It better be upscaled. It better look great. Because it's not me that's just saying this. The internet is going to be pissed if this is not a $100 product or whatever they end up charging for it. Well, I wanted to just do some off-the-cuff thoughts. This is a very interesting development. Let's see how it actually turns out. I guess we only have a couple months to wait to see if this actually appears. What do you think about it? Is this something that can really turn up the pressure on Xbox? Or is the, the gap between Game Pass and Sony subscriptions just too great to ever catch up? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a gigantic thumbs up. Share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Also, just for the memes, check out my shirt. It says, I don't speak Icelandic, but it says it in Icelandic. Uh, okay. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.